If you only look at batting average to judge hitters, you're missing the entire story. Seriously, if you're still arguing about who's hitting 300, but not asking about walk rates or quality of contact, you're decades behind. Today, we're going to break down the entire history of hitting stats in 13 minutes or less, covering the entire evolution of how baseball evaluates offense. From the days of batting titles and RBI kings to the launch angle revolution and why expected stats like ex-WOBA might actually help tell you the future. This is a story of how the game got smarter and how you can too. But before we jump into it, I've got some very exciting news for you all. We've just dropped two brand new hat styles over on the Simple Saber Metrics shop. And honestly, they might be two of my favorite ones yet. We've got a clean red, white, and blue look that screams ballpark vibes in a crisp navy design that is going to be one of the staples that I wear to the ballpark every day. They're available right now on simplesabermetrics.com shop or right here on the YouTube shop tab right below this video. So if you want one, grab it soon because we've only got limited quantities and they're not gonna last long. Anyways, back to the video. Starting in the early era, when batting average ruled the world. For the first half of baseball history, hitting was defined by three things. Batting average, home runs, and RBIs. And if you were really special, you chased the mythical 400 batting average or joined the 500 home run club. These stats were easy to calculate, easy to understand, and they look good on the back of a baseball card. And as a side note, I've used this phrase a couple of times on the channel and was recently called out by M. Salfino on my top five hitting stats video that these stats are now actually on the back of baseball cards. So I will probably continue using this phrase because I think it helps drive home the point of how the game has changed, but I apologize to Mr. Salfino and I recognize that as the game has changed, so have baseball cards, or at least tops baseball cards have. But anyways, those old school stats came with huge blind spots. Batting average doesn't account for walks. RBIs depend on whether your teammates get on base. And while chicks dig the long ball, home runs ignore everything else you do at the plate. In short, these numbers were good at the time, but they only told part of the story and it ignored the rest. Then we got into the 1950s through the 1980s, the first wave of smarter stats. By the 1950s, the baseball box score was already iconic but it was still pretty basic. You got hits, home runs, RBIs, and of course, batting average. But even then, cracks in the foundation were forming. One of the early voices of change, Ted Williams. In his 1971 book, The Science of Hitting, Williams emphasized that the most important thing for a hitter is to get a good pitch to hit. And that often meant not swinging at all, because as we know, walks matter. But it was a radical thought at the time because batting average ignores walks completely, but OBP, or on-base percentage, does not. So when did OBP enter the conversation? Well, back when the Brooklyn Dodgers front office, led by Branch Rickey, was one of the first organizations to experiment with on-base metrics in the late 1940s and into the early 1950s. However, OBP didn't appear on Topps baseball cards until the late 1980s and wasn't officially included on any MLB leaderboards until 1984. So while the stat existed long before, it took decades to catch on publicly. What about slugging percentage? The invention of slugging actually dates back even further than OBP, with the first concept published by Henry Chadwich in 1867. And even back then, it was presented as a way to measure total bases per game. But similar to OBP, it was mostly ignored by media and fans for most of the 20th century. Slugging wasn't recognized as a legitimate statistic until the 1920s, and teams took even longer to begin using slugging to assess not just if a guy hits, but how much damage those hits did. Slug was powerful because it introduced the idea that a double is better than a single, and a home run is better than both. Then enter OPS our gateway to modern metrics. By the mid-1980s, some analysts and writers began casually combining OBP and slugging into one easy-to-use number. This trend was then further established by John Thorne and Pete Palmer in their book The Hidden Game of Baseball. That number? OPS, or On Base Plus Slugging. It wasn't elegant, and as we've discussed on this channel before, OBP and slug have their own flaws, and OPS inherits all of them. OBP, of course, values a walk as creating identical value for an offense as a home run. And slug does not take into account walks, and the specific play results it does value aren't weighted equally in run production. 
but OPS caught on because it was simple and surprisingly effective. And similar to both Slug and OBP, OPS took some time to catch on, as it didn't appear on official MLB broadcasts or any official websites until the 1990s. But by then, fans and front offices alike had started treating it as the gold standard. Throughout this era, a cultural change slowly brewed. The idea that a hitter could have value without a high batting average. That maybe, just maybe, a guy who hits 270 with 100 walks is more valuable than a guy who hits 310 with no walks or no power. This laid the groundwork for everything that came next, especially once computers, databases, and curious minds like Bill James got involved. Next, we jump into the Sabermetrics era. Smarter stats began to go mainstream. Then came Bill James, the godfather of Sabermetrics. He and others, like the bright minds behind baseball prospectus and fan graphs, challenged everything. Suddenly, fans and analysts alike now had the ability to measure how much value each plate appearance added. They were adjusting for park effects and comparing hitters to league averages with weighted runs created plus and OPS plus, and so much more. Bill James' work inspired so many others to begin thinking about the game in a different way. And at this time, MLB front offices did not have dedicated analysts working for teams. But it was hard to ignore the work that James had done to create a shift in the way that bright minds thought about the game. Moneyball, the book and movie, turned this into a mainstream revolution. Billy Bean's Oakland A's showed that you didn't need traditional stats, or big money, to build a winning lineup. You just needed to think about the game in a different way to find market inefficiencies, and they did. I won't spend too much time on this portion since I just did a whole video on how Moneyball changed the game forever recently on the channel, but the birthplace of Sabermetrics was fueled during this era. Bill James, the explosion of the internet, and Moneyball all became fuel for the perfect storm of analytics taking over the sport, and the rest of baseball began to notice. Now we'll enter the StatCast era. We're talking about contact quality, expected stats, and just deeper truths. So let's jump forward to 2015. StatCast changed the game again. Now, instead of looking at what happened, we could measure how it happened. We're talking exit velocity, how hard the ball was hit, launch angle, the trajectory of the ball leaving the bat at contact, and a plethora of expected stats like expected batting average, expected slug, and expected WOBA that helped describe what should have happened based on contact quality. And suddenly, we had real concrete data to help explain why a 210 hitter might be unlucky, not bad, and why some guys with low averages are still elite run producers. Add in barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and sprint speed, and you've got a complete toolkit for understanding modern hitters. And that brings us to where we are now. The public data revolution meets the front office. So where are we now? Sites like Fangraphs, Baseball Savant, Baseball Prospectus, and Baseball Reference have taken what used to be private front office tools and made them accessible to everyone. Want to know a hitter's ex-woba or barrel rate? How often a pitcher generates whiffs in the strike zone broken down by pitch type? You can pull it up in seconds, for free. That's led to a massive shift. Today, it's not just scouts and old school GMs building teams, it's data analysts often in their 20s and early 30s, fresh out of college with a data science degree, with backgrounds in math, coding, and player development. And I know this because I am one, and most of my friends in baseball are walking down a similar path. In the tech we're using, it's gone from basic radar guns to military-grade tracking systems. Those systems have evolved over time, which started with PitchFX in 2006 through 2016, which was the first public pitch tracking system, it gave us velocity, movement, and strike zone maps. And then to TrackMan from 2015 to 2020, it brought radar-based spin rate, release points, and vertical break into the mix. And now we have Hawkeye. A dozen synchronized high-speed cameras capture absolutely everything. The spin on the ball, bat path, glove movement, and even a hitter's stride length, and so much more. This has unlocked an entire new dimension of analysis contact point and bat path analysis, real-time biomechanics, pitch design optimization, and player fatigue monitoring. And we're just starting to scratch the surface. This isn't just a revolution in stat sheets, it's a total transformation in how teams evaluate, train, and acquire talent. Whether you're a front office analyst or a high school coach, we're all now swimming in the same ocean of information. The difference is how well we know how to use it. So what are teams looking for now? 
If you're trying to get recruited, drafted, or just want to know how high-level organizations evaluate talent, here's what teams care about now. OPS, a quick and easy calculation of a hitter's overall production. Woba and Weighted Runs Created Plus, advanced stats that should be your new batting average. Expected stats, which tell us if a hitter is due for a breakout or to regress from a lucky stretch. Quality of contact, which includes barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and launch angle. In plate discipline, you can talk about walk rate, K rate, chase rate, or team's internal swing decision scores. Teams aren't just looking at average anymore, they're looking at the process. And if you want a deeper dive into my top five favorite new age hitting stats, check out the video in the link at the top of the description to learn more. So how can you use this today? If you're a fan, go to Baseball Savant, Fangraphs, or Baseball Reference. All of these stats are public and easier to read than you would think. And if you have any questions about those stats and you can't find the answers in a previous video on this channel, shoot me a question down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Because we've gone from glorifying 300 hitters to measuring who hits the ball the hardest, the smartest, and with the most consistency. My takeaways from this hitting revolution is the game got smarter and so can you. Every era of baseball brought something new. Batting average wasn't wrong, it was simply using the information that teams had available to them at that time to the best of their ability. But today, we have the tools to look deeper, to understand why hitters succeed, or why they're just getting lucky. And the more you learn, the better the game becomes. Because understanding stats like weighted runs created plus, expected WOBA, and barrel percentage isn't just for front offices anymore, it's for all of us. So if you want more smart baseball, check out our full breakdowns on the top five hitting stats that teams use today, expected stats, and plate discipline. And hey, if you want to support the channel, check out those new hats. Every purchase from the shop goes right back into making more baseball analytics videos for all of you guys. And if you've got some Simple Saber merch already, tag me on Twitter, or X, or whatever the kids call it nowadays, and maybe you'll see yourself at the end of one of these videos in the future. Thanks for watching Simple Saber Metrics, and I'll see you guys next week.